Welcome to my unboxing and first look at the G19S. This is the first refresh we've seen for, for a flagship keyboard from Logitech since the original G19, which added a full color LCD to the already awesome features of the G15. Um, unless you count the G710 Plus, which is a mechanical gaming keyboard. So the G19 is not mechanical, but it does have their game panel LCD technology as well as their new advanced surface materials. So with their new G series, Logitech's sort of tagline is science wins. And the idea is that by strategically applying better quality materials and advanced materials to the products, they can make them look better over time and feel better to use. So inside you find not a whole lot. There's a little uh, quick start guide, setup guide. There's a wrist rest and an AC adapter because it has a built-in monitor basically. It has a built-in screen on it. You actually do need to power this keyboard from the wall in addition to the USB power. But the advantage to this is that the built-in USB ports on the keyboard itself are not passive. So they don't rely on the power provided from your computer, which means they are powered ports and you can run more uh, power hungry devices off of them, such as things like, uh, I don't know, USB speakers or whatever else, where a lot of the time with regular hubs built into keyboards, you do not have that functionality. So on the bottom of the keyboard, you've got what Logitech's are calling their cable management. So you can see here, you're able to route your, you know, I don't know whether it's your, probably your headphone cable or whatever else you wanna run through here, either through this side, through this edge, through this edge, up here, down here, wherever you want it to go. In fact, you can have things come out wherever you want down here, which is kind of nice because how many times have you guys been sitting playing a game and you got your headset cable over top of your hand and it's just, I don't know, it's just annoying, right? So there you go. There's my little rant about that. You can adjust the angle of the keyboard just by pulling up these feet here. I wouldn't have minded seeing these uh, with rubber tops on the ends of them. However, they feel pretty sturdy, so I don't think even in a fit of nerd rage they'd be at risk of breaking, which was the only complaint I had about the G15 Gen 1 was the, uh, the breakable wrist rest. But if Logitech's whole thing is advanced materials, I don't think we're too worried about that anymore. Uh, we've got rubber feet here, so you don't generally have to worry about the keyboard going anywhere. So there you go. Uh, speaking of advanced materials, this does feel different from what I'm used to on a wrist rest. So rather than being a plastic piece with a coating, it feels more like it's a more rugged piece of plastic. So the idea is that it's supposed to be hydrophobic, which makes it sort of cool to the touch and so that it's not gonna get all greasy and disgusting looking. And then the same thing on the keyboard itself, on the back, or on the faceplate is what they're calling it. That's supposed to be a fingerprint resistant coating. So even though it's glossy, oh, check that out. I don't know how close in you can get, but even if I like try to leave a fingerprint on it, it actually works. So that would be my one complaint about the G710 Plus is that the, the glossy faceplate uh, is not that fingerprint resistant, whereas on this one, I, I really don't see that being an issue. That's very cool. All right, so moving on to the features we've got here is our full color LCD display, which be, can be controlled either through the software or through the menu and navigation buttons here. We've also got a game button, which will disable your context menu as well as your Windows key so that you don't have to worry about accidentally pressing them. All of these macro buttons can be recorded on the fly. So there's 12 of them with three different layers. So that's up to 36 different macro functions. And then again, you can record them on the fly. So that's pretty fly. Sorry. Um, the keyboard layout is very standard. Long shifts, long backspace, long enter. So nothing that I'd consider to be a cardinal sin that would bother me. The WASD keys are color coded in a different color. And the backlighting of the keyboard overall is customizable, which is very cool. So you can change the color to whatever you want. That's again done through the Logitech software. Over here on the right side, we find the layout is again very standard. So you've got more gaming color coding for the arrow keys themselves. Although I've very rarely seen folks game with these keys. Speaking of gaming keys, the keyboard has five key rollover, meaning that no matter what five keys you press, so if you take your entire hand and kind of go like this, they will all be registered correctly without any glitchy behavior. Um, number pad is 
empty normal. It's a number pad. You can like do accounting with it. And then over here, we've got a volume wheel. This is one of my favorite implementations of volume control. Uh, many less expensive keyboards will implement it as sort of like a function key with like, a, you know, press, 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 press for volume control. I love the wheel implementation because it's very natural to use. You've also got a mute button as well as play stop back and forward. And then your LED brightness can be controlled here. Now, I think any kind of video of the G19S is going to be incomplete without actually taking the thing and plugging it into a computer. So I'd like to do that. But beforehand, I'm just going to let our camera operator, who goes by the thuggish name of B-Roll, um, go look at it while I figure out if there's anything that I actually missed already. Advanced Surface Materials, Game Desktop Mode. Five gear rollover, dedicated media control, intelligent cable management, and a three-year warranty. There, I haven't covered that yet. We'll be back in a moment. So here we are with the G19S set up in its uh, sort of natural environment, which is, of course, right next to a G710+. Plus. Now, I want you to get in nice and close to the G710+, Plus and check out these greasy marks around the arrow keys here. There's pretty much nothing you can do about that on the G710+. Plus. Whereas, can you see that at all? Yeah, okay. Whereas... With the G19S, no matter what I do to it, other than this spot right here, this will this will still get dirty. But these spots right here, due to the coating on it, you can see that it doesn't end up looking gross because of what they've done here. So that, I thought that was really cool. Um, and that was sort of their point with this keyboard, but there you go. So OK, so this button, it turns out, actually controls the LCD here. And then uh, let's go ahead and, uh, OK, so the backlighting is, uh, it's a white backlight on here right now. but. I've got the Logitech gaming software going right here. So, I mean, Logitech really does have the most refined software to go with their peripherals. So you can see I, with the three Logitech things that I have built in, um, I can go, OK, well, I want to select which things I want. So I can have a YouTube video player for the LCD here. I can have an LCD webcam viewer. That's kind of cool. So you could like webcam with your mom while you're actually gaming. And you could just have her here sort of tucked away. Uh, Application button will either list the running applet. So here, let's try the application button, which is this guy right here. Oh, OK. So that controls the app applets that are running on the LCD screen here itself. So we can go ahead and, I don't know, we'll go to the, uh, the video player. So we'll go to top rated, how to be beautiful from PewDiePie. Oh, no. That can only be a bad thing. Oh, OK. No, nope. Flash player not installed. Cancel. Cancel. Ah, go back. Go back. Oh, OK, so this is just to browse the YouTube videos? Well, either way, we don't want to watch PewDiePie's uh, video about how to be beautiful. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out the software. So there's also lighting controls that you can change. So let's go ahead and kill the house lights. And I'll show you guys that we can change the LEDs to pretty much whatever color we want. Um, Diesel's hitting the lights for me just using the software control panel here. So we can go ahead and go like that. So all of a sudden, we've got a blue slash green backlight. We can go like this, and we end up with a very deep blue. Very customizable, and you can control the brightness as well. So here's what it looks like, full red. Here's the brightness control. So it has, uh, looks like, wow, a lot of different brightness steps. I've seen keyboards brag about 10 different steps of brightness, but this is pretty much. Uh, linear control. You can also quickly select. You can have, oh, you can have different backlight colors per profile. So your profiles are up here. So you can see that it's already set up that way. So switching between those is changing the colors. And then, of course, you can set up all the usual stuff that you can do in Logitech software, like uh, setting up profiles per game. And it really is a very complete list that they have compared to what other guys are doing, as well as programming all the different keys and all the different layers per key right here. Uh, onboard memory is controlled here, so that's, that's where you can save profiles directly to the keyboard itself. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you for checking out this unboxing and first look. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.